Hey everybody, this is Alessandro, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to give you a tutorial that is quite different from all the other ones that you've seen on my channel. You see, most of the time when I do an animation tutorial, I always start uh, from a blocking, right? Working on those nice and beautiful poses, make a proper planning. So this time instead I want to try a different approach, which I'm sure you've seen it already from other animators. Uh, but for me, I just want to share with you a little bit of my workflow uh, when I do this one and this time it's a little bit more of a straight ahead approach where basically I'm using a simple character, a simple box in this case actually to mimicking the, the character and I just want to experiment very quickly on, on an idea, right? In this case it's a character jumping around a few boxes, dodging like a, a few uh, a few blasts and stuff like that, that, you know, going up in the air, going really quickly left to right and then getting down on the target, right? And as you can see, the reason why I'm, I want to show you this workflow is because I allow you to work really, really quickly on something. Instead, I think, I think this kind of animation, I did it in an hour or something like that, more or less. Um, and overall, you can test an idea very, very quickly, right? Because if you go directly to blocking and stuff like that, and you started to work on those beautiful golden poses, okay, that's great. Your poses are going to look very good, but sometimes your original idea might not be uh, very good. You don't have a lot of room for uh, exploration. Uh, instead, in this way, you, you can explore a lot faster, first of all, and you can explore multiple ideas, all right, which is also the, the goal. It's, I think it's always good not to stop on the first idea that you're having, right? It's good to explore and come up with different solutions. And also another thing is like you, you might have an interesting reference, interesting storyboard or something, and then when you put it in 3D, you look like you realize it's not as exciting as it seemed. So using this kind of approach, right, even though we have a simple box, you can have an idea if you're going to the right direction, first of all. And second, because you have a character like this, because you have a simple box like this, guys. Um, so basically what, what's happening is that you can explore a lot more with the timing and exaggeration. In fact, if you if you see with this, uh, um, you know, in this tutorial, my animation definitely looks very, very uh, snappy and a lot more cartoony. Uh, there is a little bit of slow motion, all right? Uh, but overall, I was definitely exaggerating timing and, uh, and, and direction overall, especially when it comes to the, uh, how further the character jumps, how much does it go in the air, how big is the, the trajectory and stuff like that, right? So those are all great stuff that is cool to, uh, to explore, right? And I think this kind of workflow, at least for me, works a little bit better when the animation style is a little bit more exaggerated. It's not just purely uh, realistic where you're just copying a reference. I mean, it can have some benefits there as well. Uh, but if you follow my channel, I like to do a different kind of layout for this kind of stuff. And, and also another thing is here, you can really have a lot of fun. Usually when I, when I take this approach... I'm using this little, little box like basically like a toy, right? And just me a toy throwing it around and and and, and thinking about fun idea and see what, what what can happen, right? Like I say, I wanna maybe add a backflip here, a front flip, a twist, I wanna have the character sliding, jump from wall to wall. I feel somehow a, a lot more free to to test idea because I'm not limited about the proportion of, of the character and stuff like that yet. And it's purely creative this is something i i really like and obviously guys to state the obvious i think for me this kind of approach it works best when you already know very well um body mechanics because uh, uh you know eventually even though i'm exaggerating a lot of the movement and at some point i need to animate this kind of stuff I, well you need to be very good in body mechanics or else uh, if your character is working really fast is doing a really um a high jump or something, you don't know the mechanics, well, eventually you're going to fail in the next phase, right? So it's important that you have a good understanding of body mechanics when you take this kind of approach, in my opinion, all right? Uh, and as you can see here, I was doing the, the, the final bounce before the character kind of slide, and at some point you see me retiming uh, things very quickly, right? And again, it's it's so easy to retime things when you basically just have one controller or two controller only, right? Um that it's a lot easier to experiment and, and, and again, explore with the timing and stuff like that, right? Um, you see me also sometimes adjusting the, the up and down, the arc, adding a few extra key, whatever is, uh, is, um, is necessary. 
all right? And, and just to state the obvious, guys, the animation here, as you can see, doesn't have to be perfect, right? Because the overall idea is just uh, exploration here, right? So it doesn't matter here if the, um, the the jump is not perfect, the landing, there is a bit of a slide. At this stage, doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as I can understand what's going on, as long as the dynamics looks fun, uh, like the idea of the performance of the character, uh, that's all it that matters. Obviously, I still want to make something that is kind of presentable, right? So I'm not going to have any any gimbal lock here and there, right? I try to minimize all those things because imagine you're at work and you want to present something like this to someone, right? Um, and, uh, you, you know, you still want to make it kind of kind of decent, right? It's not that you want to make it too ugly to the point that people don't see what's going on because the character has started to, um, you know, penetrate towards objects and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of in between... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to make it obviously a Polish animation, right? But at the same time, I I do not want it to over polish it, basically. All right, guys. And see uh, here, I'm doing the, the the final part here where the character goes up in the air. I want to have a little bit of easy in, easy out, right? And holding it there for a little bit, and then just the character coming down very very quickly. Um, and as you can see at the moment, I didn't do the opponent or anything, those things, I, I can add them later very easily. And uh, and so here I, I'm towards the end of the uh, of this section here, I'm doing a little bit of overlapping, right? Uh, and then here I always sometimes go back, obviously, and rewatch what I'm doing and re-clean up and readjust the arc. Uh, sometimes it's easy to miss uh, a few details here and there, right? And so I want to make sure that all those arcs and everything the rotation, it looks decent enough, all right? So you can see I keep the, obviously the graph feather almost open all the time here, right? And I, even the landing, I wanna make sure it's kinda sharp, right? See even the, the, uh, the up and down, I want it to be a little bit sharper, okay? Do a little bit of squash and stretch, okay? Here, and then boom. Stretching it here. Right? So even if that's like this, I like to do it. Uh, once I finish the animation, more or less, I'll do with the, with the camera. Very simple. I haven't done anything uh, too complicated. The camera is just following the action on the side. Again, this shot specifically, this tutorial specifically is not about the uh, storyboard or camera composition or cinematography here. So I kept it extremely, extremely uh, simple here, right? Just follow the action. And at some point here, having a simple cut here where I, I push the camera a little bit further. It's also a little bit of a jump cut. But again, guys, for this tutorial, I didn't want to focus um, so much on the camera, but mostly about the, um, it, you know, the overall idea, the process. And as I repeat like a millions of times, when you have to follow my tutorial, don't just copy what I'm doing. Take the, the, the process, try to understand what I'm trying to teach you, and then you come up with your own idea, you modify the tutorial and something like that, all right? So obviously another thing that is important for me is that after, you know, I've done with this uh, very uh, rough previous layout pass, I still like to sketch some idea for the poses for, for some of the action, all right? Uh, because or else there is always the, the, the risk that you, you try to pose the character and you forget now to do about all those nice poses because you just focus on the, the timing and stuff like that and now your pose is going to look very, very ugly. So I like at some point to go back to the uh, uh, you know storyboard phase and do some sketches to think about the uh, you know poses and stuff like that. Okay, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this fast tutorial today and see you next time. Ciao, guys.